fact, we're in the last moments of the last day. How did Jesus go about doing all this good? He did all this good through the presence of the Holy Spirit. And those of you that are here this morning, and those of you, well, guess what, live stream, I don't think we're doing a live stream this morning because we didn't know what might happen today. We didn't know if the presence of Shekinah glory of God would come down and everybody would get knocked in the floor. We didn't know. We were just going like, we are preparing for his presence and we invoke his presence. But how did the Lord go about doing all the things that he did? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. When Israel came out of Egypt, they were slaves. And God brought them out. And the very first night that they came out, a fire came and set before them. And it watched over them in our dark hours. And even sometimes when they had to move at night, the fire was there to show them where to go, how to step, what to see. And on the day of Pentecost, it says that the Holy Spirit ascended and it sounded like a, a mighty wind. And that mighty wind came in to where the 120 were. And it says that they, they saw what looked like cloven tongues of fire set upon each one of them. It was there. They prepared themselves. They stayed there. Unless all of the 500 that had seen Jesus and talked to him, they weren't there. But the others, these stayed. They wanted something to happen in their life. And it says that when he came, it says, cloven tongues of fire set upon each one of them. And as it set upon each one of them, it says that the, the wind of the Spirit gave them, they began to speak in tongues. And when they spoke in tongues, it was evident of what God had prophesied through Joel many, many hundreds of years before that this would happen, that in the last days that the Spirit of God would be splashed, the wind of God's Spirit would be splashed upon all mankind, that whosoever will, people would come, receive, people would be speaking in tongues, prophesying, seeing visions, having dreams, supernatural things would be taking place. And we come to this time where we're in a season where men are trying to push God out of the church and trying to bring themselves, the, hu the humane uh, thinking, the secular thinking into the church. And if you look up the word secular, whenever you use the word secular, it always means non-sacred, unholy. And so men are trying to bring unholiness now into the church. And you and I, called to be believers, you and I must make our stand in these days. Whether we are, and this is, this is, this is, this is how it is when you're no respect of persons. When you are no respect of persons, you tell them the truth, regardless of the consequences. Okay? They may walk away from you, they may hate you, they may go and lie on you, they may despise you, but you told the truth. And the truth says that Jesus is Lord. And he's coming back one day, and he's giving you the opportunity now, all right, to be refreshed by his spirit. And if you turn that down, you're already abiding under the wrath of Almighty God. You don't want that, okay, because uh, it's, it's not your best. Just take this word from pastor this morning. It ain't your best, okay, uh, to be under the wrath of God. And so you and I find ourselves in a time where there are so many things pressing us from the outside. Lawlessness is abounding. Uh, anybody, any, any witnesses seen any lawlessness lately? When I say lawlessness, I mean people are doing wrong and claiming they are right in doing that wrong. Now, I got a 15-minute message here, but if y'all sit around and act like y'all ain't in church, I can sit here. I don't have anywhere to go but home. <laughs> Pastor told me to take my time, so guess what? I got one witness, and the Holy Spirit, that's two so guess what? Y'all in trouble today. 
No, no, no. But if you answer, I will, I will get through this real quick because I know that we have other things to do today. And I am always a respect of your time because God gave it to you. He didn't give your time to me unless you're serving with me. And so in this day that we live in, you see so much going on, even filtrating the church now. Where people want to live in the church the same way they want to live in the world. Now, when I say in the church, I'm talking about the body of Christ on a whole. I'm not talking about where you go on Sundays. I'm talking about the body of Christ on a whole. You are a part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That which was birthed from his side when, they, when that Roman soldier stuck that spear in his side, all right, and it says blood and water came out, well, you were birthed the same way Eve was birthed, or should I say woman was birthed, when God made man go to sleep and pull woman out of the man. The man named her woman. Then when the fall took place, he named her Eve, the mother of all living. But when the woman was, was brought forth out of the man, she was redefined twice because Adam was redefined from the dirt. The woman was redefined from Adam, which means that she was redefined twice. And that's why you women are so sensitive to things. You're so sensitive to the things of God. You're more sensitive to the things of God than men are because of that, okay? And because of that, you pick up on things or, that are going on around. And you, you know, and sometimes when you open your mouth, sometimes a man may try to tell you to be quiet or you don't know what you're talking about. You know, my wife and I, we were in Richmond yesterday, and this lady, she came up, she started talking to me, you know, and, and then my wife came and she started talking. Her husband was there, and he didn't say nothing. She was talking, and then, then he started talking, and then guess what? When he started talking... And she said, well, can I say this? He walked off. And then she said, now, isn't that something? She told him right in front of us. She says, now, isn't that something? When you're talking, you can talk all you want to. But when I want to say something, you want to get like, he didn't say a word. I just said, see y'all later. I'm gone. I ain't getting into this one. <laughs> I'm not getting into this one. But what I'm saying is women are so sensitive. And in this day, ladies, because you're the governor in your home, I didn't say you were the king, because you're the queen in your home, I didn't say, guess what, you were a dictator. Because you are the one who, who's involved with your children so much, you should know the times that we live in, that you share with your kids, that there has to be a character change in you through the new birth. Other than that, your children are not going to make it in this world. In the next five years, who knows how it will be. They're trying to change laws and times and things just like Daniel said in the last days. The enemy would try to change laws and try to change times and whatever. And you've seen it going on and you're sitting around acting like you're, you're an ostrich with your head stuck in the sand. You know 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, there would have been no such thing as same sex going in the same bathroom. You know that. You can, you can see the stuff that's going on around you, and you're the ones that's got the power to change it, and you're not willing to pray before the Lord God. His word still says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal the land. Well, don't you want the land healed? Yes. It's not going to be healed by you just walking around and saying, well, you know, they just want to live the way they want to live. Everybody's got a choice. No. We have one choice. His name is Jesus. <laughs> if you want to live, his name is Jesus. I'm glad you know that name. And so how did Jesus go about healing all who were oppressed of the devil? God was with him. The same power that went before Israel every night and every day. It's the same power that you and I have now to carry us through dark times and even through the daylight hours where we need to see how to move, maneuver around things so that we might get to our blessing. The same spirit of God that was fire and that was a cloud is the same power that you and I have now when we got baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's the same ability to see that you don't have to be blind anymore. I see so many of our kids blind today because the parents, and I, I'm saying this to you parents because in a moment, you guys are going to be up here dedicating children to the Lord. 
Some of you came today just because of that. You didn't come because you wanted to hear about God. You came just because you want to be here because you're a family member. Well, I got some news for you. I'm going to stay over here. I like this guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say this to you. All of creation came from God. And all of us are responsible to him. And when he presses laws upon us, all right, as it is with you. Anybody in here in relationship today with anyone? Hold your hands up. Everybody is. You got a mother, you got a father, you got a, you know, Uncle Boo Boo Bobo. You got Uncle Suey Suey, whatever his name is. You got those that don't know who they are. You, you're in relationship with somebody, okay? There are rules to every relationship. Don't fool yourself. If you don't have rules, you're abused. There are rules to every relationship, all right? And if you don't set rules, then abuse takes place. And God has set the rules for our relationship. If a man loved me, women you included, <laughs> if a man loves me, he will do what? He will keep my commandments. And my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. See, the rules of the relationship are established by God. See? And so if you don't love his word and you don't keep his word, then there's only one place for you. There must be somebody else's words that you keep and somebody else's rules that you abide by. And they're not the Lord's. So there must be somebody that stole you away from God a long time ago. We call him the devil. He's named Satan. But guess what? Either way, He's the thief who comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And he's been destroying your life a little bit by little bit all your life. But when you meet Jesus, somebody say Jesus. Jesus. When you meet Jesus, things turn around. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but I've got piles of witnesses of people that we've met over the years that everybody will tell you, this is not something that can just go on and you just go like, okay, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. No, 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 no. This is a relationship that requires some intense pursuit because he's told us, he's warned us, he that endures to the end shall be saved. And you won't endure to the end without his strength. We see so many people in the body of Christ falling away. A young lady just told me yesterday when, when all this stuff with the pandemic went on about church, she was asking us about church, and she told us, she says, well, our church, we couldn't sustain it, and so we had to sell out to another church. Now, isn't that something? That the church of God has got to sell its buildings and things to another church. Do they love the Lord? Yes, they do. Does God love them? Yes, he does. See, the, the pressure is coming that you're going to either believe the word or not believe the word. See, when God says it, guess what? By stripes you heal. A little while ago, I saw people up here. I prayed that every one of you, you came up to receive. You're an empty vessel. An empty vessel. Allow the tea bag that you are to, guess what? Influence the water. <laughs> Not the water influence you. Allow the tea bag that you are to percolate and to become more. Now, we're going to look at this scripture and, and I really want you guys to get this because with the Lord, all things is based on believing. All right? Please go with me to the book of Hebrews. And then I'm going to let you guys, well, you won't go home so fast, but you'll be here. But I pray that your favor that you're seeking will come from the right place. We've been talking about favor, you know, for a little while. And, and favor is simply, you know, somebody loving you so much that, you know, that whatever you do, that favor and love is still there. Don't, 
I don't know how, if all of you are church people or not. Uh, I don't know. I know who's here and I know them, but don't per se seek gifts and abilities. All right? Because all gifts and abilities will pass away one day. Seek love. Now by the faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. All right? The greatest of all things is love. Because gifts and all the other things will pass away. Even faith will pass away. Hope will pass away. But love won't. Because love is God. And so if I seek love above all other things, then love itself will produce all the other things in my life that I need because faith works by love. So if I seek love, who is God, then all the other things that I need in life, they'll come to me because he becomes the audience of one. All right? And that's the audience that you need in your life, the priority, love. All right? In Hebrews chapter 1, we're going to read this, and, and it's important for you because some of you are here today I know you're not born again, and I could pick all of you out, but that would be embarrassing to you. If I did it in public, it would be embarrassing. If I did it privately, it would probably work, and this is why you have to watch what you say and how you say things to people because guess what? Everybody can't handle everything publicly, and some people can't even handle things privately, all right? But I know that you're not born again, and you know that you're not born again. I'm not going to the bird story today, all right? <laughs> you know that you're not born again, okay? And God knows that you're not born again. And the devil knows that you're not born again. And this is why we gave the invitation, because some people haven't made up in their mind yet who they are and what they want to do in life, all right? And I'm always here to tell you the truth. All right? Regardless of the consequences, you may walk away from here today and say, I'll never go back to that church. I ain't never going to another church of the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. Well, guess what? Sad for you. I feel sorry for you. And one day when you're swimming, you'll think about it. But the deal is today you're here. And regardless of what you want to hear, you're hearing my voice. And because you're hearing my voice, the Holy Spirit is speaking to your conscience. You need to get this. God who at sun-dry times and divers' manners spake in times past until the fathers by the prophets. In other words, God sent his men and his women, his judges. He, spent, he sent teachers. He sent everybody he could to speak to people in the past by man. Okay by the unit, by the integrity, by the character, by the, the man who could interpret the word of God, he sent men to men so that men would know that the Lord God had them on his mind. See, he's been thinking about us ever since the fall. In fact, he thought about us before the fall because it says before the world's foundation, Jesus was crucified. So he thought about you before the world was made. But the deal is, are you thinking about him? Because then it says this. It says, has in these last days. Now, I believe that this is Paul writing to the Jews because all of his other letters were written to Gentiles. But I believe that in his heart, because he always wanted his own to be saved, I believe that this is the book that he wrote to the Jews because he wanted, because they understood some of these things about Melchizedek and the high priest and whatever. So he wouldn't write this to the Gentiles because they had no understanding about this. But all of this whole book is written to about Jewish history and the involvement of Jewish history in the, in the form of religion. And so he's saying these particular things. He says, have in these last days spoken to us by his son. His son. He's speaking to you right now by his son. Not, not by the interpretation of what a revelation came to a man and then that man had to travel on foot or horseback or something and go and by the time he got there, all of the things that broke his focus was there and whatever and some things came out that was right and maybe some things didn't come out that was exactly right. But Jesus is never wrong. 
And what he's telling us about these days and about your life is exactly the will of Almighty God. This is why it is so important to hear somebody talking to you when you don't want to hear somebody talking to you. You need to learn, and I learned this a long time ago, learn to be wrong. Well, I need to be right all the time. No, you don't. You need to learn to be wrong. You need to know that Jesus still heals. Get wrong in that attitude or that paradigm that you have about going to church. Well, I just don't want to go to church because I don't want to give that man my money. Let me tell you something. That's because you don't know the scripture nor the power of the scripture. The word says that when you are tithing, when you're giving, whatever, you do those things because guess what? You believe and know that Jesus is alive. Not because that preacher or that church over there is doing anything. I can tell you right now by experience, don't trust people to live on. Can I hear you over there, Pastor? Yes. <laughs> don't trust people. Don't trust people to live by. Okay? You better put your trust in the Word of God. All right? Now I got three minutes. I'm going to shut this down. And when I shut this down, the door's going to be open. You didn't answer the invitation a little while ago. But the Holy Spirit's still knocking at your heart. Can't you feel your heart going? <laughs> Having these last days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person upholdeth all things by the word of his power. When he had made himself purge our sins, he sat down on the right hand of majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he have, had, as have, have by an inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. The name of Jesus and what he says is what abides today. And when Jesus comes and he says, today's the day of salvation, buddy, you better jump up and run. When he says, today's the day of your healing, buddy, you better start feeling all over yourself and going, everything feels well. When he says, today's the day of more than enough, guess what? You ought to be looking at your bank account, feeling your wallet, moving like this, looking at your bank account, going, Jesus just gave me a word. Jesus just told me that it's all right. Why? Because guess what? He's the one who upholds all things by his word. And so when his word comes, guess what? Can't nothing put his word down. Nothing can push it down. Nothing can annul it. Nothing can tell the word of God that you don't work today because Jesus is the one who's upholding all things by the word of his power. And so no matter how low you've been, how down you felt, the word of God will pick you up just like this. And he won't pick you up and let you back down. He'll pick you up and hold you. And he'll shape you while he's got you there. And he'll cause you, guess what, when he puts you back down, you're going to be in a place that you never thought you could ever be in your life. Because that's what salvation is all about. That's what the grace of God is all about. That's what the mercy, the true mercies of Almighty God, they're all about. You are never the same after you accept Jesus Christ. You are never the Do I have any witnesses in the house? You are never the same after God puts his hands on you. You are never the same. You may look on the outside like you used to look at that picture, but let me tell you something. Give yourself a little time, and guess what? That picture that you looked at, that picture will not look like you anymore. You begin to change because God's resting you. He's, he, listen, 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 listen. You're in God's mirror. And God's fixing you up for how he wants you to look when you meet Jesus. So you're a bride. And he's going to make sure that you have the prettiest gown on. Woo -wee. Cinderella slippers look nothing like those Jesus is going to give us. <laughs> she, had go she had glass slippers. Let me tell you something. Jesus got some better slippers in mind for us, all right? And when we come down that aisle and meet him, let me tell you something. You're going to be the most beautiful thing that you ever even thought you do, never would ever be. By, by, by your imagination, you think you look good now. You don't look good now. You're just as ugly as you could ever be. But let me tell you something. When God get finished with you, you're going to be so good looking that Jesus actually calls us. He says, we're going to rule the world, Mr. and Mrs. Jesus Christ. We're going to reign and rule over the world. We're going to be the ones. You, you think that world out there is running things right now? I got some news for you. 
Some people have messed up some things when it comes to you and I and how, how the end is going to be. Well, you read the scriptures. You read the scriptures and how Jesus said that the angels are going to come and separate the tares from the wheat. You read it how he says that as the days of Noah were, it's going to be like that in the end time. In other words, guess what? They were swept away and the righteous were left. Somebody got to get this stuff right. Somebody going to have to get this stuff right. There's no such thing as escapism with Jesus. We are all included in his body. I'm telling you right now. And we're going to all reign and rule with the Lord Jesus Christ. Y'all got any people in the house today? <laughs> Mercy. That's what we have. So I'm going to shut it down now. I feel like I'm just getting going, but I got to shut it down now. <laughs> For God so loved the world. What was in this world to love? Can you imagine all the sin that he's seen? All of it. Can you imagine all the ugly words that he's heard? All of them. Hmm? Can you imagine how he heard you one day blaspheme in his name? Don't, don't think he don't know about it. <laughs> Am I right, preacher? Come on now. Come on now. You sound good over here. Don't, don't let me down. Don't sit down on me. <laughs> all right. Can you imagine all the curse words against God? That he's heard. Hmm. And you think that he's just going to dismiss all that? No, he gave you a way out of all that. I'm so glad for his mercy. All right? He gave you a way out of that. And this is why your family members pray for you. All right, I saw Nicole back there. Hi, Nicole. <laughs> I saw Nicole back there last week, had her hand up because she's believing for her family members. A lot of you had your hands up. You, you believe why? Because you don't want them to meet God without Jesus. God's a consuming fire. You don't want your family member. You don't want your husband. Your, you see your kids going to hell and you just let them walk there? You don't, you don't tell him, listen, no, I'll slap you backward and upward and any way I can because the word of God says that the rod. And so today my hand is a rod. I don't care what the world say. I, I'm not living in the world. I live in the kingdom of almighty God. The rod of correction will drive foolishness from a child. That's the problem today. That's why you got so much disrespect. Some of you need to say my number 12. Gonna be the rod today. <laughs> and they will get it quick. They'll get it quick. You don't, don't be afraid of somebody trying to break laws and trying to make laws to cause you not to love God. We don't abuse our kids. Never have. I never would even correct my kids in front of other kids. I take them home and correct them. See? Because there are things that you do, you don't break a child's spirit, you don't break, you don't devalue anybody. When you start devaluing a person, you start selling that person. Do you know that? There's a price on your words. You know that? There's a price on your words. When you tell somebody that they are nothing or they are this or that, you just sold them for the amount that you figured that they're worth. That's what Judas did with Jesus. Sold him for the price of a slave. All right? You don't devalue anybody. You think let things come out of your mouth, they better be edifying. <laughs> you better be lifting them up. And so when we take our children, we never abuse our kids. We always let them know, listen, you can be this, you can be this, you can do this, you can be that. I picked a little boy up over there just a while ago by the Spirit of God, and I lifted him up. And I told him, I said, one day, the Lord's going to lift you up like this. Amen. See? You, you, you edify kids. You, you, you speak to them. But you can't let kids be disrespectful. Yes. And you guys that came here today to be witnesses, you're going to be godly witnesses, then guess what? You got to do it the way God says to do it. Amen. You can't let them go like, you cussing your mama out, and you don't, you don't knock their teeth out? You cuss your mama out? If you cuss your mama out, the preacher don't stand a chance because your mama brought you into the world. 
You cuss your daddy out? You talk bad to your daddy? You, you tell your daddy anything that comes into your mind? We need to back up about 10 generations where we just slapped them. <laughs> and I know some people don't like it, but when you meet Jesus, I'm telling you, he's going to be the same way. We have a world out there that's trying to tell all of you, give up your righteousness and live against God. That's why I say what I say. If you knew me personally, you would love me dearly. But because you're looking at me as a pastor, guess what? You're going like, oh, that man don't know what he's talking about. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. My mama, let me tell you something. See this side of my face? I remember a whole lot of times this side of my face felt a whole lot different than this side. <laughs> this side of this felt a whole lot different than. Can I get an amen, sir? <laughs> see, see, all I'm saying is Jesus is upholding us with truth. And if you live truth, the blessing of God will be on your family. See, but don't throw that away because somebody's putting pressure on you out there to belong to a club or belong to a group, or let's be, let's be a part of this gang. Well, don't you want to fit in? Yes, I do fit in. I fit in Jesus. I fit in him. That's why I fit in there. And guess what? There's no other place to fit, not in this world. All right? And so that's my warning to you guys, my love for you guys today. I could talk to you about love, and I'll leave you with this note on love. Love is the perfect place in the Holy Spirit. It says that the Holy Spirit, whom we were praising this morning, he shares the love of God from himself, from Daddy God, from Jesus, through our hearts. All right? So if I love you by God, then guess what? I don't talk about you. Come on. I heard somebody say, that's true. Say it out real loud. Okay. I don't, if I love you by God, there's a burning fire in me that no matter what goes on, my love still burns. Now, we may have to correct some things, but I don't have to correct my love. I never have to correct my love. We have to correct situations, circumstances, and all those things, but I never have to correct my love. Because my love is from God. So when you understand perfect love, you'll know you have to walk upright a whole lot straighter than you've been walking yesterday. All right? God bless you guys. Woo! Don't you love Jesus? Well, if you love him, stand up. Let's give him some praise, Nate, you want.